Thank you. Appreciate it. You're in department 16. I need Hostos stuff. Yes. <coughs> I don't see it in here. Um, so there's Stokes. Can you grab find Oh, wait, here I have Stokes. Excuse me, I have Stokes. So Stokes, as we said, was page 172000032. Council, I would appreciate appearances, please. Yes, Your Honor. Joseph Martin for Joe Stokes and the Jimmy Tennant Council. Melanie Morgan for Nation Star. Okay. I just want to make sure. Is Ms. Tobin here at all? She is not. Is Council for Ms. Tobin here? She's a proper person, Your Honor. Well, actually, that's an interesting question. I heard you say that, but counsel, that's not what the record shows. And that's the reason why the court's about to say something. Oh, okay. So, feel free to sit down if you wish, or stand up, whatever's more comfortable for you. So here's what the court, the court left on today's hearing for the mere purpose. The court needed to find out what was going on in this case. Not that the court really, and here's the reason why. Because from this court's understanding, the only thing left in this case, okay, the court made its rulings, and there was a notice of entry of order, and that was one of the issues here, is because Sun City Anthem did not file their notice of entry of order until April 18th. So I did not have an effective order on a prior ruling on a motion for summary judgment at the time the documents for today's hearing. Friend the reminder, folks, even if your colleagues aren't getting things on time, it makes you now have to show up in court, right? And notice they're not here. Anyway, um, non sequitur, but so today technically was shows a Tobin opposition to Nation Star motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack and counter motion for summary judgment. This got a clerk's. Wait, did somebody take it off for today? Yeah, but can you see? Because somehow somebody messed with my. Okay, so anyway, today we're showing a Tobin opposition to Nation Star motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack and a counter motion. So somehow this got a, well, it was double filed, okay, that double filed, but my point is a little bit different. I don't see this hearing, that's why, sorry, Madam Clerk, I just, I didn't see the hearing, it came up. So then it somehow got a, not, not being my best choice of words, but. It received, excuse me, I'll phrase it that way. Somehow it then received a notice of hearing. Then we received a notice of appearance from Ms. Tobin on 4 9. However, there is no notice of withdrawal of Mr. Mushkin's firm on behalf of Ms. Tobin. So, there is no notice of withdrawal or any order on any notice of withdrawal or any, any O because there's no motion. So, whether, so Ms. Tobin. Notice in proper person appears to be a rogue document, but then one would look to see how she said that she potentially came in as a defendant and intervention cross claimant in proper person, but yet at prior. I think I can kind of assist you on it, man. Feel free to do so. <laughs> I've been in this from day one, so I, I think I have a pretty good. So I thought I was. So go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So, Mr. Mushkin's office represents. Tobin as the trustee for the Hansen Trust. Because what happened was when Ms. Tobin came into this case originally in proper person, Your Honor, uh, we were at this hearing and said, you, you don't have standing because you're not Correct. the trustee. So that's when she then came in as the trustee and Mr. Mushkin represented her. Now, she has no standing in this case because as an individual, Ms. Tobin individually has nothing to do with this case. Which is why the court was understanding as Mr. Mushkin would only have the role as her counsel. The court didn't see that Ms. Tobin has any proper person status right. in this case. And, and Mr. Mushkin represents Tobin as the trustee of the trust, not individually. Okay. So what happened, and this is what counsel and I are gathering, what happened was when Your Honor granted the HOA's motion for summary judgment against the estate, the trust, the trust. That was over. They were done. And so what, what Ms. Tobin did then, she tried to go do an end around and file this opposition counter motion in proper person individually. So again, long story short, she has no standing in this case, Your Honor. The only party that has standing is the trust because they were 
theoretically the former owner, right? They were they were the former owner when the foreclosure happened. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Which is where thank you, I appreciate where the court was going because the document I was referencing, the four nine two thousand nineteen, said defendant in intervention slash cross claimed. There is no intervener anywhere in this caption that this court saw, and I was going to get clarification from the parties, that's why I need to have as many people who are going to be here on this case to confirm that that's everybody's understanding. Is that your understanding? Well, well. There's no intervener. She did intervene in the other case that was consolidated into this case. But not in an individual capacity. No. It was in a trustee of the trust. Correct. Which is the only role that Ms. Tobin held, not as an individual. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Both. Okay. Well, yeah. Which is what the court saw. That's so. absolutely right. Okay. Because so. title to the property prior to the foreclosure was in the name of the trust. Nina not. Tobin, trustee of the Gordon B. There Hanson you go. Trust. That's it. Right. That's, That's it. the only thing that this court saw. That's right. So a retitling in portion of a caption on a document filed where she made herself an individual it was the first time this court, I spent a long time looking at this entire case again. No, it was perfectly fine. I'm just, the only time this court saw Ms. Tobin in an individual capacity was her placing herself as an individual on a document that she filed, is the way this court referred that's, it. That's correct. Right. I did not see that in any filing by either A, any other party, or B, any other records. Is that consistent with everybody else's understanding? That is absolutely okay. correct, Your Honor. So, Here's, but the court left today's hearing on for the purpose of, I need to ensure that every case has is correct and any rogue documents don't exist. I also wanted to ensure that if Ms. Tobin appeared or Ms. Tobin's counsel appeared, that everybody had a full opportunity to be heard. So here's where the court sees today's hearing. The court sees today's hearing is that there is, cannot be a Inclination, I can let anybody who's here respond, okay? Let me see what I've got. I've got a notice of settlement that Nation Star, Joel Stokes, and Sandra F. Stokes, as trustee of the Jimmy Jack Irrevocable Trust, have reached an agreement on all material terms, right? Correct. Does that then moot the 5-7 motion for summary judgment? It does, and we were going to withdraw that motion, but then when we saw these filings from Tobin, we thought it would be cleaner just to leave it on. That's why the court's asking the question. Okay, so here's what the court, the court really, at the end of this morning, sees that there is nothing, subject to anybody telling me differently, the court sees that there is nothing from a, left in this case, now that I have an NEO, from the Sun City Anthem, left in this case other than I need to do a status check on settlement documents between the parties who filed the notice of settlement on 412. That's correct. Well. Is there anything else left? I'm showing you walk that through your caption. Nona Tobin, an individual oh, trustee of the trust, still has claims against Jimmy Jack? That's, yeah, that, that is true. Wait, Nona Tobin, the trustee against Jimmy Jack. So that is left for trial. Okay, but if I may... Hold, hold on, hold on just a sec. Okay, no, that's, thank you for that point of clarification. Right. So that was not, because there's been no... But in that capacity, that would be Mr. Mushkin is counsel for the trustee. Correct. And Mr. Hong as counsel for Jimmy Jack, correct? Correct. That, correct. Okay, so... And on that one, Your Honor, if that's the only thing left, if, if that is, and if they're actually going to pursue that, based on this court's previous order for summary judgment in favor of Opportunity Homes, who was the buyer, we would ask leave just to clean it up, because there's no reason to go to trial, if we can just do a simple motion mirroring the court's order, like a res judicata. Because Opportunity Homes, the claims alleged against my clients by the trust are identical to the claims that were alleged against Opportunity you Homes. You can appreciate the court cannot grant any oral leave when I do not have a noticed hearing. Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't have all parties. Right, right. The court takes no position on anything. I can't address anything right. that's not before me today. Right. Because I don't have all parties right. here. Right. But okay. we would ask uh, leave in a written sense to file a written motion. The court can't okay, right, right. address anything that's not right. specifically before it. Sure. 
particular dates and deadlines and everything sure. had passed, sure. the court was only asking for a point of clarification so that we ensure that we have a clear record. So let's do today's purposes. Today's purpose, to the extent that there is an opposition to Nation Star's motion for summary judgment, I'm going to put that in place for two seconds. I'm dealing with the second portion. There's a counter motion. First off, I need to go to the specific plea. First off, the court is going to find that there is a rogue document filed, which is a notice of appearance. on 4-9-2019 of Nona Tobin in proper person because there is nothing in this case that shows Ms. Tobin has any individual capacity. There has been no leave sought for Ms. Tobin to have any individual capacity. The only portion of this case in which there is Ms. Tobin in any capacity is as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust dated 8-22-2008. And in that capacity, Ms. Tobin is represented by counsel. That counsel has not filed any motion to withdraw, is the simplest way of phrasing it. So any pleadings on behalf of Ms. Tobin as trustee for the Gordon B. Hanson Trust need to be filed on behalf of counsel. There is no Ms. Tobin in any individual capacity. The notice of appearance of April 9, 2019, therefore, must be viewed as a road document and must be stricken because there is nothing with Ms. Tobin in proper person. And the clerk, please see that that gets stricken. Okay. Next document, while the court did see on that same date there was a notice of completion of mediation also filed by Ms. Tobin in her individual capacity, the court already had a prior document with regards to the mediation being completed, since that also was filed by Ms. Tobin individually and not by Ms. Tobin's counsel, who is the only party who can file on behalf of Ms. Tobin as trustee for the Gordon B. Hansen Trust. The court was inclined to strike that notice of completion of mediation, also filed on April 9, 2019. Does anyone disagree? No. No. I probably should have phrased that. Does anyone have... I have a double negative there. Does anyone feel that that document should remain on the docket? No. Okay. So since that document also was filed by Ms. Tobin improperly, because Ms. Tobin is not a party to this case, Ms. Tobin is represented in her trustee capacity, which is the only capacity in which exists in this case. By counsel, she would not have had permission to have filed a document on her own. 4-9, notice of completion of mediation, also needs to be stricken. The court now goes to the 4-10-2019 document. 4-10-2019 at 11-17, there was another document filed by Nona Tobin individually, not filed by Mr. Mushkin as counsel for Nona Tobin as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust. That document was titled, Tobin Opposition to Nation Star Motion for Summary Judgment Against Jimmy Jackson Counter Motion for Summary Judgment, hearing requested in conjunction with hearing for Nation Star MSJ schedule. When the court looked at that document, there was two issues. One, the same issue the court just noted that was filed by Ms. Tobin individually, and she's represented by counsel, and Ms. Tobin is not a defendant intervention cross-claimant in proper person because her only role in this case is set forth based on the pleadings is as trustee of the Gordon B. Hanson Trust, and in that capacity she is represented by counsel. That counsel is not withdrawn. So the 4-10-2019 document filed at 11-17 similarly would be a rogue document. Does anyone have any position with regards to that statement? No, absolutely. We agree. We agree. Okay. So the 4-10-2019-11-17 also needs to be stricken. Now contained therein also, even if the court were to look at the underlying arguments, which it can't, but even independently, the court's understanding is there is no claims between Nation Star that currently exists with regards to Mona Tobin as trustee of the Gordon Hanson Trust. Is that correct? That's correct. 
So there would be no opposition that would be appropriate, even if the court could look behind the fact that the document was improperly filed. Is that correct, counsel, for Nation Star? That is correct. Okay. So there would be no opposition basis anyway, because you aren't on opposite sides of V in any part of this consolidated <coughs> caption, correct? That is correct. Okay. So we, then we did file an opposition just pointing that out, that, we, that there are no claims, but I understand that. You actually, you filed a very well, uh, what was your document title? Titled your document. I think they actually, uh, however you titled your document, I think you titled it a little bit. Huh? I just, yes, we filed that recently just to say there are no claims. Yeah, so as pointed out by Nation Star, but I'm just confirming in open court just so we have it clean in one place. Yes. Okay. So then the second portion was something that was titled a, once again, the court can't look at this, but I'm just giving an independent basis, just so it's abundantly clear. Um, going to the second part. Um, it's unclear what portion would be viewed as its own section. Um, as a counter motion for summary judgment because the court in looking at this although when the court takes okay it says did not meet the burden against Jimmy Jack I mean it's basically I didn't see any portion that could even arguably be a section, even if the court could have looked at the underlying document for purposes of preparing for today, that could go against. The court's just going to leave it at what it is. Although it's titled a counter motion, it wouldn't have been a counter motion because I'll phrase it this way. The court's going to phrase it even to the extent that somehow, even though it's titled a counter motion for summary judgment, it's an improper counter motion independent of all the other reasons because the counter motion has to relate to the same party and the same claims since it doesn't go against Nation Star because Nation Star has no claims with regards to the Tobin as trustee for the Gordon B. Hansen Trust dated 8-22-2008. She can't file a summary judgment against a different party in a different role in a consolidated case and raise new issues so it would not be appropriate counter motion in and of itself would be to be a separate independent basis even if you could view it that way to the extent that you could even independently view the underlying motion which the court can't take into consideration anyway because it's a rogue document that now has been stricken still would be inappropriate because even if it appears even at best possibly maybe as a motion for reconsideration from a ruling of a year or so I'm not really clear what it is, but whatever it is, the court can't consider it. It's not what it is. So that would be stricken. Now, then it was filed again on 412. On 412, there was also three documents filed. Those same three documents that were filed on 49 were refiled on 412 the notice of appearance, the notice of completion of mediation, and the same opposition and counter motion. For the same reasons that the court just stated that the 49 documents, were rogue documents and for the same analysis on the opposition and counter motion, which truly is an opposition and counter motion, those three documents on 412 would be stricken also for the additional reason that they're duplicative of the 49, but for all the underlying reasons for the 49 plus the additional ones that those would be stricken. So then there is the notice of settlement, but then there's a stipulation in order to extend a briefing schedule that was filed after a notice of settlement. So now the court has to address those between the parties that are before me. So notice of settlement, does that mean that you do or do not wish in light of what the court's ruling is today, clearing up the record with regards to the rogue documents, I still have a notice of settlement, I have a stipulation in order to extend a briefing schedule, I have a reply to a motion for summary judgment and counter motion for summary judgment. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. I Strike one more document, sorry. On 417, Ms. Tobin also filed a document called Reply, 417-837. Saying Tobin's reply in support of joinder to Nation Star Mortgage's motion for summary judgment and reply in support of Tobin's motion for summary judgment. Rogue document for all the reasons the court said with regards to the 49 documents, the 412 documents, other than it's not duplicative. Um, so that 417 reply also would be stricken on 417, 
as well. So, and Councilor Nation, sorry, I knew you didn't call it opposition, you called it response. I knew you oh. called it something more appropriately to what it was. Okay. The court is not finding it appropriate to strike the 419 response by Nation Star because that was just a clarification to enlighten the court with regards to the improper filing of documents. The court did not view that as viewing on the merits the underlying pleadings filed by Ms. Tobin. So the court was not inclined to strike the 419 because it just clarified those underlying documents. Unless Nation Star was requesting the court do something. Is Nation Star requesting the court do anything? No, no. Okay. So now I have a stipulation to extend briefing schedules and a notice of settlement, and I saw a pending motion for summary judgment on May 7th. Council, what would you like to do about those underlying documents? Well, we could, we could uh, withdraw and vacate the stipulation to extend the briefing schedule, because, Your Honor, that was actually prepared and submitted prior to the Not notice. submitted, but yeah. yeah. Well, submitted, I mean, so yeah, I mean, by the time it got filed, we had already settled, so mm -hmm. it's moved now. That, that, that document is moved. Okay, so the court can disregard that stipulation yes. on the briefing schedule. Yes. So now I still have a pending motion for summary judgment on 5 7 at 9 30. Is that going to be heard or not heard? That's not going to be heard. Um, the only claims you, involved with respect to that motion have been resolved. Okay, so are you doing it in open court under EDCR 7.50? Are you filing a notice of withdrawal just so that in case anybody else thought that maybe they were showing up on that particular day? I'll file a notice, a notice of withdrawal so that everybody has something in writing. Okay. But for today's purposes, would you like us to vacate it on the system today and then you'll just file a notice of withdrawal? Or would yes, you like us to leave it on? Yes, we can, we can vacate it if it's okay. Okay, at the request of the movement, and since the only party which could have filed any pleadings, you are agreeable? To oh, yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then the 5 7 2019 motion for summary judgment hearing gets vacated and that gets taken care of. Now, I have to leave on the calendar call and the bench trial because currently, in light of everything that everyone's told me, and here's, we currently have Nina Tobin as trustee for the Gordon B. Hansen Trust versus Jimmy Jack is the only remaining parties in these combined cases, 720032 combined with 730078. Is that correct? I think there's somebody else. Tobin as trustee also has pending claims against Yun K. Lee and, and F. Bondron Bondra LLC. Right. I do appreciate with that. Thank you very much. Then the, the court make a clarification. So the only thing remaining in this case then would be counterclaimant Nina, Nona Tobin as trustee of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust, <coughs> bless you, dated 8-22-08, counterclaimant versus Jimmy Jack Irrevocable Trust, Yun Lee, and F. Bondrant. Okay. And I Council for Nations, three. pardon? And I represent all three officers. And yeah. Mr. Hong represents all three of those defendants. Right. And Council for Ackerman, I, when you file your next pleading, please do make sure that you're ensuring your caption only shows in the trustee, which is the correct capacity. Okay. So take out an individual. Well, we understand that there's no individual. Right. It's only in the trustee capacities. Okay. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. So we just need to make sure our captions are correct. Okay. Right? Yes. So we just need I had a couple of different so and we understand that that was just typographical error, is that correct Council for Nation Star? No, no. I don't really know. I I, I think what happened is when Ms. Tobin came into this case before she got counsel, an individual meant an individual as trustee, not individually. Does that make sense, Your Honor? She's never been in this case individually. She can't be. She has no standing. And the court ruled on that at previous hearings early on. And that's, that's yeah. But th this is how, the way it's reflected in the caption is how it's reflected in her cross-claim. That's how they worded it. Yeah. I'm not sure if you're reaching out to counsel for the trustee. Maybe there's a stipulation heading this court's way to ensure that we have a clarification. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we just need to make sure we have it clear before trial, right? Or anything else. Anyway. But, but the court's understanding, since there's only the trustee, Mr. Mushkin represents the only party in that as the cross claimant. And that's the only place in the cross claimant. Okay. Right. So that is taken care of. So now the only thing, the last thing I need to do is give a status check on settlement documents with regards to 
the two counsel and parties they represent that are standing here in court today. Right. Since I currently have a calendar call date of 521, do you want me to make that your status check on settlement documents? Sure. Since one of the two sure. you have to be here anyway? Sure. Does that make sense? That would be yes. fine, Your Honor. Okay, why well, don't I just make your status check on settlement documents that same 521. Oftentimes I do it on chambers, but I think this one you're going to want it all cleaned up anyway, so. Sure. Let's keep you at 521 the same day as your calendar call. It's going to be a status check on settlement documents with regards to the settled parties. Okay? One more last matter, Your Honor. I believe on uh, Thursday pre -trial conference. there's a pre-trial. I need to keep that pre-trial conference on, can you can appreciate, because I have parties remaining in this case. Right. Can I, uh, and I've never asked Your Honor this before, but can I appear via court call for that pre-trial? I cannot, as you can particularly appreciate from A, we always have to have counsel present because we have to get things set on this trial stack. And it's whoever's cell phone is I'm sorry, that's, that, oh, that's, that's yours? Oh, yeah, okay. That's, um, the reason why we do is we do it for one, we have to do it for all. And you can appreciate why we can't do it. Do you have a co-counsel? I, I, I don't have a co-counsel, but can I have a colleague appear on my behalf? I'm not going to be in the country. That's the problem. I'm not in the country. Yeah. See the challenge we have here. We had to put that I mean, I have a colleague here, Your Honor. I'm sure that colleague is going to be your co-counsel for purposes of trial. This case goes to trial, right? You're telling me it's your co-trial counsel? Sure, sure. And you're, yes. Co-trial counsel is here. Co-trial counsel is here, fully informed on what dates this case can go to trial. Sure. That's the requirement. Trial counsel needs to be here. Okay? Right, um, can I also that would include co-trial counsel. Now, if the second counsel wishes to appear telephonically, right. as long as co-trial counsel is here in person, okay, perfect. then that's okay. what it is. Okay. Um, I was just wondering if Nation Star can be excused from attending the pre-trial conference on the basis that we've settled the claims, or if we still need to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's you don't, true. Just a sec. Um, walk, let me. Oh, sorry. You don't owe me any orders, you don't, right? The only thing... I, I owe the court a notice withdrawing our motion for summary judgment. So if you have that done in an NEO, then... Actually, you don't even need an NEO on that, because that's just a notice of withdrawal. If you don't have a pending motion before this court, because you've done a notice of withdrawal, like the guy took care of it today, there's nothing that you're in this case for any matter, are you? Just to get the step in order for dismissal file, but that's just a notice of settlement. Right. You wouldn't have to show up for a PTC on that anyway. But no, I don't see any reason. You're more than welcome, but I don't see any reason why, from a standpoint, whether or not you want to file that notice of withdrawal beforehand so that okay. you might make it clean. But I don't, based on what you've represented to this court, you're not in any part of this case anymore. Correct. And just having a status check on settlement documents does not require a person to show up to a pretrial conference because you have all orders in showing that you're not in this case. Right? Right. That? Yeah, sure. No. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so Your Honor, my co counsel. Your co trial counsel will be here, and if you're requesting court call, you need to get that in today so that it can get set up, right? All right. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank, thank you so very much. Okay, Tim. Now, counsel, just a second. I've got, oh, sorry, in, I'm just doing the counsel in the gallery. I'm just trying to figure out who I've got in the gallery because I've got two things. One is a Rule 16 conference, one is a 10 o'clock. Counsel, you were here for Barnes at 9 o'clock, but I had nobody here, and I called them like five times. So let me call my 9 o'clock for two seconds. Let's see what's up. I have one request. I have my clients on the court call, and the notary's been waiting for like an hour and a half. No, they haven't. They're, you were at 10 o'clock. Well, I know that. He just had to get there early to well, make sure that that's, we do it. That's why we tell them 10 o'clock, and that's, you know, it's 10-ish. We do these in order. I appreciate it. So let me just real quickly finish up with this 9 o'clock. Um, Madam Court, court command, court report. We're going back to page five, Denise Barnes versus Bankruptcy Estate of Ross, which was five, page five on nine o'clock. That was the one we called 